We're joined now by a beloved Falcon, a guy who had a 13-year NFL career, Mundock Todd McClure in the nest with us today. He played for um, a lot of different kind of eras of Falcons football, a lot of different coaches. What do you think the guys on this team, as they're kind of getting through these last few games with an interim head coach, how are they kind of feeling knowing that, you know, the future's kind of up in the air at this point? You know, it's definitely an unsettling feeling. Uh, and I know at this point, because we've been through one of those situations with one of Harry's old coaches with Petrino, you know, uh, it, was, it wasn't a good feeling. You know, I'm not saying that they don't have a good feeling right now, but it was a season that you were just trying to get through healthy. Uh, you know, and I think at this point, there's a lot of uncertainty, you know. Guys don't know if they're going to be back or what's going to happen. It's not a good feeling, you know, but uh, hopefully for those guys that, you know, are towards the end of their career, uh, you know, I'll have a good spot, either whether it's here in Atlanta or somewhere else, you know, they can end it the right way. Mud Duck, you was a seventh round draft pick in the 1999 NFL draft. Now, did you ever think that you would have a 13 year career, but not just a 13 year career, but with one organization? Harry, never in my wildest dreams, man. I, you know, I tore my ACL my rookie year in training camp, and I thought that was going to be the end of the road. And uh, the good Lord had other plans. You know, I, I guess I proved myself enough in OTAs that they would, uh, you know, put me on the IR, give me another opportunity. And uh, I didn't look back at that point. You, you know, it. you know, once you get out there and they're trying to find a guy to replace you, and I just felt like I never could give a guy that opportunity to, to get any snaps, you know, and, um, you know, it, it all worked out and definitely blessed, you know, in these times to be in one city for, for 14 years was just, uh, definitely blessed. And not only that, but you only missed one game from 2000 until your retirement after the 2012 season, which is insane. First of all, how did you do that? Second of all, and what's kind of like the key to longevity as a big guy in the NFL? <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of it has to do with luck, uh, you know, because guys get caught in situations with their back turned and get rolled up. Uh, the other thing is my mom prayed constantly for us, you know, to, to stay healthy when we were out on the field. Um, and then, like me and Harry were talking about, you had to, in my mind, I had to push through and play through some injuries because I didn't want to give another guy 10 snaps. I didn't want to give him five snaps to, to put that thought in the coach's head or the GM's head that the guy behind me was better than me. Um, so anytime I could be out on the field, if I was in pain, I wanted to be out there with my guys and not give somebody else another chance. Of course, you played with Michael Vick. A lot of people who come on our show talk about him being someone that they remember super fondly, all the excitement he kind of brought to this team and to Atlanta. What is uh, one of your favorite Michael Vick memories, and what was it like to actually play with him? Mike was an unbelievable guy, you know, unbelievable talent. And to put one play, it's hard to do with Michael Vick. So I'll give you a couple. Uh, the, the first one that pops to mind was in Minnesota when he had the, the walk-off 60-yard run uh, to win the game, that was an unbelievable feeling. Uh, I can remember Mike in the snow at Lambeau Field when we went up to Lambeau, beat the Packers for the first time that they had ever been beat in, in Packers history. Uh, Mike was at the helm. I can remember him scrambling. Uh, Bill Miller had him on the sideline. looked like it was going to be a sack. Mike got out of it, and I think he threw it to Algie Crumpler down the field. Uh, and so many more memories with Mike. You know, he's just an unbelievable guy, an unbelievable talent, and he produced a lot of memories for me. Now, Mud, you, you've played against a lot of guys uh, along the defensive line. Who would you say that you went up against was the toughest person you ever had to block? <laughs> Harry, Chris Jenkins, without hesitation, played with Carolina, <laughs> finished with the Jets. Uh, the guy was 6'5", 6'6", 230, 240. Quick as a cat, and I knew when I played him, I had to be on my A game. So I studied more film when I played against Chris Jenkins than anybody I ever played against because he can embarrass you in a heartbeat. And I wanted to make sure I was ready. There's a lot of trash talk, I'm sure, in those trenches as well. You played against Warren Sapp, lots of guys that probably were big trash talkers, but who had the best ish that they uh, dished at you? The, the guy that's your, your co host right here interviewing me. May have talked the most trash in NFL history. <laughs> I believe that. I believe uh, you that. believe it? I'm telling you. I wish we had more episodes of Harry Douglas mic'd up because <laughs> I, I truly don't think anybody else talked more trash on a Sunday in the NFL than Harry Douglas. Harry, am I lying? 
No, but listen, Kelly, it used to get so funny to the point that where Matt and the old line should be like, man, can you just shut the hell up? Because you don't have to block these guys. Like, you don't block these guys. And Matt was like, listen, they're coming to sack me. Just tone it down a little bit. Yeah, that, that was the worst part of it was Harry was talking trash to the D-line, not the DBs. He was talking to the D-line because he didn't have to line up against them every day. But, you know, awesome. great memories, and I love it. Harry could talk trash with the best of them. I but, believe it. Mud, where, where did the nickname Mud Duck come from? And I, I just love how it sounds because I already know you. I already know you're gritty. You're a tough player. My type of guy. You already know that. In them trenches, I could count on you every Sunday, off the field, on the field, no matter what it was. But tell everybody where the nickname Mud Duck came from. You know, Coach Al Miller was a strength coach. He was there with uh, Dan Reeves coaching staff when I first got to Atlanta. He was a Louisiana guy. And everybody had a nickname. I guess he thought I had a little bit of waddle when I walked, Harry. You know that. You know my walk. Uh, so it just started with Mud Duck, and it caught on. And, you know, for the next – after that, for the next 13, 14 years, that's what – nobody called me Todd. You know, it was always Mud Duck in the locker room. Harry was telling us a story about how when Roddy White did not catch a ball in practice or dropped a ball, that you always said, all right, we're going to lose the game. I have to hear more about this. This is hilarious to me. Tell me more about that. Yeah, it, it worked out. It was – I forget when it was, but Matt would throw one of the deep routes on a – I don't know if it was Thursdays in practice, and Roddy dropped it. We went on to win that Sunday. So, the next week, same thing happened in practice. Roddy wasn't always, uh, you know, full speed in practice. Uh, but on game day, he was ready. So, he dropped it a few times, and we, and we won one big, and then he caught one of those passes in practice, and we lost. So – it kind of got to be a running joke with the O-line. Please let, let Roddy drop this ball so we can win on Sunday. Uh, and, you know, it was good times. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Um, kind of switching it to this year's squad, this, this season's team, what are your impressions of the two young guys they have on the right side, um, you know, given the small sample size, I guess, that we have from them? Yeah, you know, they, uh, they're guys that are learning. I feel like for me, from my second to my third year and on into my fourth is when I made the biggest jumps. Uh, playing that game up front, it's all about experience. And when you can start, when the game starts to slow down and you start to see things before it happens, it gets easier. Um, I think they have two guys there that'll be uh, with the franchise for a long time. And, you know, as a quarterback, running back, you got to feel comfortable with it. We uh, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. The fun uh, memories and stories that you have to share with us. For anyone else who wants to check out the rest of this conversation, definitely do so on fox5atlanta.com. Um, thanks for your time, Todd, and we'll be right back.